Hey, hey we're, we're the Clunes, and we make hippy dippy trippy bullshit videos on YouTube. <laughs> The set we're on right now came from CBGB, the esteemed bar on the Lower East Side. It was known for being like the center of punk rock. When we launched Space New York, we did a partnership with the owners of CBGB to install actual pieces from the bar in Space New York. It's hard to get locations in New York City, and most people who own a restaurant, bar, etc., know that they can get money for using it as a location. So for us, a you know extremely low budget. We need a place that we can shoot for free, essentially. And so a, a place like this that YouTube sets up for us is awesome. Nick and I tend to do camera, sound, light stuff. Mitch is usually our talent on screen, but today is gonna be a little bit backwards because Nick and I are gonna be on screen. Mitch is gonna get to operate camera. <laughs> so <laughs> It's gonna be crazy. For the folks at home, we don't know what's gonna happen next. Frame is locked. Audio speeding. Audio's not speeding. Audio's not. Audio speeding. The mic was in the headphone jack, but it's okay because we got audio, we got camera audio. <laughs> you guys, they can't find Carlos anywhere, <gasps> and all the gels were lost in a very small fire of gels. Oh my god! <laughs> Is that a true story? No, <laughs> but Carlos will be here any minute to help us. <laughs> The ideas for the videos that we make come from conversations that we have, things that make us laugh. I recorded a random conversation between my mom and my aunt, and we acted it out. Oh my god, I love your shoes, Mag. These are house shoes. Where'd you get them? Ross. They're so cute. Ross. Look at mine. Yeah. Aren't they darling? Yeah, I They were on I sale online. Like oh, wow. Well. Mark, I never could grow a blueberry. I had a blueberry, it died. Mm. So we have a large part of our audience that thinks things should be more PC, uh, but we uh, like to lean into some of the more weird, absurd, adult, scary things about life. Everything happens for a reason. <laughs> Even the idea of life is absurd, right? Like, we're going to die, but we spend this whole time like making a successful career, having a successful life. Hiring you was a bit of a gamble. It's been a bit of a roller coaster since the third quarter. Look guys, you don't have to sugarcoat it. Oh, really? You sure? Yeah. Empty out your desk. You're fired. Build a great retirement so you can yeah. have a great retirement. But you're going to die. Like, it's going to end this whole time. Everyone knows it, but we don't talk about it. We just keep playing these pretend games. And, and it's yeah. fine. There's nothing wrong with it. But once you start to, to really zoom out from your very narrow perspective, it just all starts to feel very absurd. So I think our, our comedy now is, is coming from this like slightly removed angle from the like very interpersonal kind of drama. Tasty nuts, tasty walnuts, tasty nuts in your mouth. Tasty nuts, tasty walnuts, tasty nuts on your tongue. I love reading the comments, both good and bad, because it's a fun litmus test to see, like, oh, did we hit it? Did we not? Yeah. And then at the end of the day, it does not matter, because we are going to make exactly what we want to make. And we'll be dead, dead, dead real soon. Very soon. So it really doesn't matter. So funny. The perception that I am an individual self that is separate from everything else is the kind of root cause of most suffering. And so then you start to look at your life and the way the ego is constantly asserting itself in many, many ways. And really, it's okay because it's a survival mechanism that's made it so our species has lasted a very long time. But it's also something that keeps you from feeling connected to all things and it's a, a bit of a barrier.